What's up, world? How y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? It's God. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know I like to bullshit with people. You know what I'm saying? You know I'm a bullshitter. So, uh, I'm here with Awakening Remnant Coalition. I come through every now and then, push play on his uh, videos, but this one is Stop Being a Simp. You know what I'm saying? You know the title, you know what I'm saying? Already lets you know <laughs> that you're going into the house of the devil, the seat that Satan dwell at, you know what I'm saying? Because he say, stop being a simp, he accusing somebody. You know, man, you can't accuse nobody, man. You can't judge and accuse nobody that you love, man. I'm going to tell you. You can't judge and accuse nobody that you really truly love. You know what I'm saying? And you know the scripture, love your enemies. Jesus, when I was Jesus, I said, love your enemies. You know what I'm saying? Love your enemies, man. That go a long way. You know what I'm saying? Take for a husband that's getting cheated on or a wife. That's getting cheated on or beat on. You know what I'm saying? Do they stay? Do they normally leave after the first time they get hit or talked about or, you know, mistreated? No, they don't leave. Because they love their enemy. And most of the time in a marriage, <laughs> you got an enemy. You know what I'm saying? You got God and you got the devil. You got one that's going to get caught up and one going to stay. You know what I'm saying? That's the way it always happens. You know what I'm saying? You got one narcissist and you got God, a godly person. You know what I'm saying? That's got sense. That's always talked down to. You know what I'm saying? trying to take and turn uh turn off they like you know what i'm saying but let's listen see what he's talking about stop being a simp i'm gonna do a i'm gonna do a uh a research i mean i'm sorry i'm gonna do a video on on what a what the hebrew word simple actually means i'm gonna get into it grammatically yeah, grammatically speaking, and deal with um, hip, hip red grammar. Um, but for now, I, I'm not going to get into that. But I'm going to show you how simple. There's a there's a form of speech called like a simple form. It's the most simple form that there is. It's the form that everybody can read it and understand it. And so there there is this idea of simple that actually means being easy or common or on the surface. It's something that you ought to be able to pick up without anything because it's simple. So certain things are simple because they're just easily seen, easily um, read, easily understood. Easily That's the way I pick up on people when they judging and accusing people. And in a minute, you're going to see where he judging and accusing people when he start talking about people that he's saying, telling to stop being a simp. He going to start judging and accusing as a devil would. You know what I'm saying? But just like he explaining the word simple, he doing a pretty good job. You know what I'm saying? Because he letting you know that simple is something, you know, like I always throw in there when I quote myself, you know, when I was Jesus. You know what I'm saying? When I said, uh, go and learn this. Simply believe in him that he sent you know what i'm saying believe in him daddy sent believe in him daddy in you know what i'm saying because if you walk up to me with god in you in your heart and you come talk to me and you just be nice to me just talk about the day or whatever but you got god in your heart and you don't have the devil in your heart judging and accusing then god is walking up to me you know what i'm saying 
You know what I'm saying? Go and learn this. Simply believe in him daddy sent. And if daddy sent you, daddy in you, daddy going with you. <laughs> As you. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Easily heard. Easily felt. It's very simple. So in dealing with symbols, the 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 wisdom is crying out to the symbols, not in the positive way of saying something like how simple Torah is to understand, because that's positive. But he's saying how simple people, people who, who people who are simple, what means what? That these are people who have no depth to them. That everything about them is so surface. And you have to be very careful. I see I'm going to go into another video. You have to be very careful, Zion, about being a simp. Because a simpleton, a, simp, a, a simple person is a person who has no depth. And therefore, everything about this person is on the surface. So what do you mean, Maury? So let's, let's break that down, because I'm trying to help kings and queens. So, so to be raised properly as a king or a queen, one, one very important point that, of course, Uncle Solomon is trying to get us to see is that the outside of a person and the things on the outside are not really that important. That's simple. And there's a lot of people who they don't have any value to themselves. They don't know that they have any value other than what's on the outside. That's a simp. Man, you on my watch, man. Shit, man, they grow that grow that's right there, boy. You understand me, man? That watch cost me, that watch cost me a hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Alright. Okay now. What make a man want to come and do a video like this? Judging and accusing somebody that's bragging on a watch. Or somebody that's bragging on a car. Or somebody bragging on a house. Ain't nothing wrong with bragging on a house or car or something if you had the money to pay for it. Ain't nothing wrong with bragging on it. God ain't got nothing against you bragging on it. But Jesus told you. You know, maybe told you, uh, Jesus ain't never told you don't brag. But then now, uh, 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 the disciples told you don't boast. You know what I'm saying? They told you don't boast because, you know, church people, <laughs> that's what they do. That's what Creflo Dollar do. He, he good at telling you don't boast. You know what I'm saying? Because what he do, you know what I'm saying? He take Jesus and turn Jesus into a devil and accuser. And he turns Jesus, the very Jesus, and he said in Jesus' name and all that, you know what I'm saying? He 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 say in Jesus' name, this and that. And he used Jesus to make people feel bad and to shame people. You know, and take away what credit they might have had with Jesus in doing something. Because everybody is in the body with whoever is in the body. You know, if Satan controlling your body, devil, you a devil. And Satan controlling your body, that's what you is. But if Jesus is in your body and God controlling your body, God in your body, Adam in your body, then, you know, you godly. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nothing. You don't have to worry about people judging and a key, I mean, boasting. You don't have to worry about people boasting because in God, if God was the the real boss, if God was your boss, you know what I'm saying, and God, your boss was paying you, and not your current bosses at Walmart, Mart. Not your current bosses at Dow Chemical, Phillips 66, Amoco, 
and all y'all movie stars, if y'all wasn't getting paid by the industry, if the government wasn't paying they people, and God paid everybody equally everything they need in abundance, overflowing, and God don't care what he do with his money. Like I said, you know, you can work one day, you can come in this world one hour, 30 seconds, and get your money from God when you come. And everything is yours. And you're going to be taken care of by your mama and your daddy. If your daddy made you, he might stick around now. Since I'm giving him all the money, whether he work or not. You know what I'm saying? And with work, I hope everybody keep working. Because I think everybody going to keep working. Because if we don't keep working, then everything going to shut down. But that don't shut down my mind frame of giving y'all all the money in the world you can handle. You know what I'm saying? A million dollars and two thousand dollars a week until I catch up with six hundred and sixty-six zillion and twenty-two zillion dollars a week. You know what I'm saying? Which is already in there from all the past money I, you know, offered you and promised you and all that my word don't go back come back void it do what i say it you know what i'm saying so real quick you know what i'm saying not in in this life not the next you know what i'm saying i don't wait around to uh see it in another movie in the next life no man i watch my movie now you know as i do it you know what i'm saying but i don't judge and accuse but I don't have a problem with nobody that's bragging on what they got. You know what I'm saying? If they got it godly, I don't I don't care. But like I said about Creflo Dollar, you know what I'm saying? He do things in Jesus' name, but he used Jesus to judge and accuse us and bring us down, not giving us credit for what we done. I'm God, and he don't even give me no credit. He give all the credit to Jesus. You don't give Adam no credit for being the body that Jesus was in. For being Adam. He don't give Adam no credit. You know what I'm saying? For being the father, being the Lord that Jude talked about, that warned him that was that he he is judging and accusing God and murmuring and complaining, walking after his own lust. You know what I'm saying? And then talking about uh 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 Jesus did that. You know what I'm saying? You didn't do nothing. We're as filthy wax. You know what I'm saying? Man, shut up. You, The devil will bring yourself down to keep the people in his kingdom down. Just like saying that Creflo Dollar sound like a crab in a bucket. Pulling the big crab that's going over back down. The other crabs that's trying to get out back down. You know what I'm saying? That's what that sound like. You know what I'm saying? A crab in a bucket. Trying to bring the other crabs down. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Ain't nothing. You don't need to be congratulated. What you need to be congratulated for. Jesus did that. And that just take Jesus plumb out of you. Because I just snatched my son out of you. You ain't no Jesus. You ain't no Christ. You know what I'm saying? You ain't no God. You ain't no pick. Because you don't even know Peck. And Peck been here since 2008. Made the last Adam in Exodus that you heard. And judge and accused. Alright. So you got 10 Rolexes. You got over a million dollars worth of Rolex watches. But you don't know what time it is. Talk more. I said you got over a million something dollars worth of watches. And you don't even know what time it is. That's a sim. Always trying to get a nice man. My car, man. Check out my car, man. This nice man. Shoot, man. I got ten cars. I got fifteen cars. I got twenty cars. And don't know where you're going. That's a sim. And that's what I, that's what I think about y'all. They be judging and accusing. You know what I'm saying? Just judging and accusing, judging and accusing, being the devil, man. That's all you doing right now, man. Can you? Do you do you ever listen to yourself? 
You know what I'm saying? Me, when I used to make my recordings, I didn't do them on YouTube or Facebook. You know what I'm saying? I, I was discreet. You know what I'm saying? Me and God knew the people we was talking to could hear us anyway. People used to be in the mall looking at me saying, that's God. You know what I'm saying? To their wife. You know what I'm saying? That's God. You know what I'm saying? And they'll speak and everything else. You know what I'm saying? Because I was God. And I wasn't on TV or nothing. Wasn't nobody filming me. I was in my truck with a little MP3 this big. Little bitty MP3. You know what I'm saying? Before I got the voice recorder that was about this big. With no camera. Just me talking as God to the world. As the world. You know what I'm saying? Talking in tongue. You know what I'm saying? And I've done that for years. You know what I'm saying? Without judging and accusing nobody. I was just telling it like it is, judging and accusing wrong, and I will judge those who judge and accuse. That's my job. Sam, your whole life is out there waxing and polishing cars. Huh? That's a sim. You're defined by somebody else's name. Rolls Royce, Bentley, Mercedes, Porsche, Audi, all these things, man. You, anybody who thinks that they can be defined by something that they drive is a simp. And I'm not talking from a, from a view of a person who ain't had every car. And I've said that on several videos. Don't change whether I'm driving, driving an old bucket, a truck, or a new Mercedes, or a Porsche, or if I had a Bentley. Why? Because I understand I'm not a, a, I can't be a simp. Okay, now, okay, we we recognize that you not a simp, okay? You just explained it. You not a simp. You don't brag on what you got. So why did you have to tell us about it? Why did you have to tell us that we can't brag on what we got if God blessed us and we got it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why would you call us a simp if we just wash it, keep it clean, and you call us you judge and accuse us because we wash and keep a car clean. We're not worshiping the car. We worship God that gave us the car. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem with y'all. Y'all jealous and envious. You know what I'm saying, sir? You know what I'm saying? Get your life right, man, and get God in it. You ain't got God in it. You ungodly right now. You a devil right now. You an accuser of the brethren, brother. You know what I'm saying? Get your life right. You know what I'm saying? Golly, man. I got a lot of chance. Let me see what TDJ talking about. Come on. I'm going to teach it till you get it. Everybody else walked in the store with money and American Express and MasterCard and Visa and here come Mammy Wilson with a bag full of food stamps. But she got just as much food as everybody else because the food stamp was accounted. No, let me go back, Daddy. Let me go back because he sure messed that up, Daddy. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. No, I'm going anyway, back. Don't nobody bring me no bad news. Now, I'll hang up on you. I can't let it in. I'll cut it off the TV set. I'll stop watching it because I know you're trying to infect my faith. The devil is a lie. My faith is the substance of the thing I hope for. He finna mess all that up, Daddy. Watch him about faith. He gonna bring faith down, Lord, and faith, Daddy. Just like he brought it, it brought respect down, Lord, and respect. Not yet seen. Evidence is admitted into court. It is proof. It is receipts. It validates. It is the evidence. 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 No receipts. No evidence. I, I mean, no evidence, no receipts, Dad. Listen to that shit. You got to see to believe, Dad. You got to see to believe. The things and he's teaching faith now. For them that love him. This is the evidence of things. You're a goddamn lie. 
You a goddamn lie. You ain't. Remember oh, when you were a child? How you had imagination? Absolutely. Listen to you this, Daddy. You had great imagination. This us, Daddy. Now he in the image of God. You believed. And he, he just messing this all you up. You had imagination. The image of Somebody God he talking about. Somebody told me the other day they jumped out of the window because they thought they could fly. When you stop dreaming, you stop flying. Ooh, I have a like question. You said so. What took away your hope? You? <laughs> now you ain't take away my hope, but you tried to. When did you stop dreaming? Did divorce do that to you? Watch this, Daddy. Did you let the rapist take away your hope? Did your mama preferring your sister kill your hope? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it. Listen to him, Daddy. <laughs> Listen to the it. elders obtained a good report. They wasn't good. They wasn't good. Listen, Daddy. But they were able to get a good report. Listen, Daddy. They wasn't good. But you, you said they was called righteous. But they wasn't good, Daddy. That's what the devil said. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him as righteousness. Listen, Daddy. He wasn't righteous. See there, Daddy, he wasn't righteous, but you said he was righteous. Abraham You know what I'm saying? That fat devil. That's all he is, Daddy. Abraham was not righteous. I'm not saying he wasn't a good man, but he was not righteous. Where you see God said he wasn't righteous, old fat motherfucker? Counted unto him as righteousness. I have, man, I, shit! I go crazy Excuse me for cussing, y'all. No this God, man, I don't care. But you drive me crazy, cause to me, I bring the money in, I bring it in. Here it is. This is what we got. No, we we can't account for it like that. We have to put it in this column. I said, just put it in the bank. I don't care what column you put it in. Just put it in the bank. Well, if we borrow it from this column and put it over here it's all the same money listen he's sitting up there telling us how him and his wife argue over rich ass money you know what i'm saying judging and accusing everybody and then judging and accusing abraham lying on abraham if god accounted him righteous for believing he got damn it righteous if Rahab, which was a hoe, a prostitute, if Rahab was considered righteous, she was a prostitute, plus she lied for my spies. She lied for my spies. Just like Jacob, mama, lied for me, telling Jacob to trick his daddy so the right person can get the inheritance. I said the elder was going to serve the younger. But you, devil, accuse and judge who? Jacob and his mama. How you going to judge Jacob and his mama? And I consider them righteous. Not Esau. You know what I'm saying? Not old Dalton Thomas that had the see to believe. How you going to judge God and then talk about God and talk about you got to see to believe and you want to raise Thomas' name, somebody who seen that's believing. Man, what kind of teaching are you trying to teach these people? But it's how you account for it <laughs> that passes the audit. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. He wasn't righteous. <laughs> You're a goddamn lie. God marked it up on the ledger. And so God lied. God lied. God lied. God lied. 
So, so God lied. God lied. Now, if God marked it up as righteous, God lied. He lied. Huh? T O fat ass nigga. Huh? Trying to wear your beard like me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a t shirt, they fear the beard. You want to act like you, me. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, cut your shit off your face. You need a smooth, bald, bald chin, just like you. You got a bald head. You ain't got no covering on your head, and you don't need need no covering on your chin with your lying ass. How you gonna sit up there and lie on God? Say God lied and said somebody was righteous that wouldn't. Faith is like food stamps. You ain't got no money, but we'll take it like money. Faith now, faith is like food stamps. This coming from the rich man. Faith is like food stamps. You know what I'm saying? We'll take it anyway. Faith is like food stamps now, God. Faith is food stamps. <laughs> Shit, like I say, man, God, just give everybody everything. The trees and Z is a dollar. You know what I'm saying? And shut T.D. Jakes up. And shut everybody up about money and its purpose. And just go buy the gold that you want. And dress nice as you want. And go to Walmart like you want. Go to the grocery stores like you want. Build more grocery stores like you need. And build more convenience stores like you need. More houses, more apartments, more mansions. Apartments are mansions. You know what I'm saying? Build more. Everybody. Partners. Together. Sharing, not buying and selling. Ain't no more buying and selling. You know what I'm saying? It's giving and receiving. Ain't no more lending. Ain't no more loans. Ain't no more credit scores. Credit. Ain't no more taxes. Ain't no more owing the government. Shit. Ain't no more owing T.D. Jake. Shit. God giving. I'm taking. So security. You ain't got nothing to do with it. Just open up a bank in Adam's name. To serve the people. Serve the people Adam. Like T.D. Jake say when he take money. He say serve the people. You serve the people and give them money. Shit. Come on, come on. I'm going to teach it till you get it. Everybody else walked in the store with money and American Express and MasterCard and Visa. And here come Mammy Wilson with a bag full of food stamps. But she got just as much food as everybody else because the food stamp was accounted. But it wasn't nothing. But it wasn't this really wasn't ain't nothing. I, I want you to understand food sounds just as good as everything else. People hate you because they know something about you. And, and they know you ain't that righteous. And they know you ain't that holy. And they know you ain't that good. And they saw you do something stupid. And they heard you did something stupid. And they fussing at you right now, saying, I ain't going to listen at her. I'm not going to listen at him. because they're not. But what they don't know is God is a bookkeeper. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bookkeeper, all right. I'm a bookkeeper, all right. With web you ain't lying. I'm a bookkeeper. No you, you sure ain't lying about life. that. I'm a bookkeeper. Show sure up. And he accounted it as righteous. And what you need to know is once the books say you're righteous, stop acting like you ain't. Walk in what God said. Talk in what God said. Move in what God said. Preach in what God said. Because according to the books. How you going to preach in what God said and Adam and God broke? You know what I'm saying? Adam and God ain't got no house. You know what I'm saying? Adam kids ain't got no house. You know what I'm saying? You got the house. You and your wife fussing over my money. He, this God, T.D. Jake, this ain't Adam. This is Adam. But it ain't Adam talking. It's God talking, T.D. Jake. Where my money? 
You know what I'm saying? You up there talking about you got a walk in God, this and that there. But ain't nobody gave God shit. It ain't passed over to God. God ain't being taken care of. And a lot of people ain't either. You know what I'm saying? Well, a lot of people working and ain't happy. Shit, I want people that's working to be happy. Shit, working, doing what they love to do. Not what they got to do for change from you. Shit. You think you're waiting on God? God is waiting on you. God is waiting on you to believe what he said about you, not what you remember about you. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Watch this, can I go a little deeper? Through faith, we understand. Through faith, we understand. Faith is the truth we stand under. Through faith we stand under. It is my covering. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. Now when you read that in the King James Bible, it sounds like he's talking about the creation. He really isn't. Because when he says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, that is true of the creation. But in this particular text, he is not using the Greek word cosmos. He's using the Greek word eons. Now listen, through faith now. Now what is faith, y'all? Let me tell you what faith is. Faith is the substance that the substance of no. Faith is the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Remember when I tell you to pray, I tell you to pray for things that be not as though they were like me, giving a wife that I don't know yet, something that I gave her in the future before I even met her. And we get there and have a deja vu and know we was meant to be there together at that time to live together forever. You know what I'm saying? But faith, man, you got to ask a question. You got to hear the disciples asking questions. They ask, what is, the fa what, is, uh, what is the work that we must do to be saved? And Jesus said, go and learn this. Believe in him that he sent. S simply believe. In him that he sent. Believe in him daddy sent. Believe in him daddy in. And when Jesus walk up to you. You'll know that daddy in him. And daddy sent him. And daddy in him. You know what I'm saying. And daddy with him. You know what I'm saying. But. It was another question. What is the work that we must do to work the works of God? Again, same answer. Believe in him that he sent. Believing is the work of faith. So faith without works is dead. When you hear James say that, faith without works is dead. Well, he might have meant it another way. But faith without believing is the right way to say it because faith without believing is dead not faith without works ain't no works in believing believing is simply just your mind clicking and the renewing of your mind thinking is there before it's there you know what i'm saying by, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And I framed it all from in the inside of Mother Nature. My mother, grandmother, were framed by the word of God. Adam LaTroy Jackson is tattooed on his back. So that things were, which are seen, were not now made of things which do appear. You know what I'm saying? Because the things which do appear don't make my future things. You know what I'm saying? 
You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm the one, the invisible God, that makes future things. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, TDJ. Which is ages. Through faith we understand that the ages were hemmed in by the word of God. That my future is locked. That, that he's got a hedge around tomorrow. I'll prove it to you by the Bible. Satan, Lucifer, go curse Job. You know I can't curse Job. You got a you got a hedge around him. I can't ain't nothing. A curse speaks to how you're gonna end up. How can I mess with his future when you got a hedge around his future? Through faith we understand that the eons were framed by the word of your tomorrow is already fixed. Your tomorrow is already fixed. You down on your knees crying. But who taught you that, T.D. Jakes? Adam and God taught you that. From 2009, all that talking Adam been doing in them recorders. Then 2015 and 16, he graduated and went to Facebook and got on TV. And YouTube and got on TV, T.D. Jakes. Then you start checking them out. You know what I'm saying? Getting jealous and envious and all that. You know what I'm saying? You don't know nothing about faith, T.D. Jakes. You know what I'm saying? All you know about is serving the people to bring in to you. You know what I'm saying? That's the only serving you know is bringing in. You don't know serving, giving out. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Let's go somewhere else, Daddy. Let's go somewhere else. All right. Let me see. Let me see. Oh yeah. Oh. Shoot, let me see. Who is this? Oh, that's Janet Jackson. Yeah, man. Shoot, I be messing with y'all, man. But uh, let me see if TDJ hit the spot. Gonna come on. Get Mailchimp's advanced yet easy to use tools and start leading more customers down the path to purchase. You are more. Entered Jericho and was passing through. A man that was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see he wanted who he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he was what? Because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree. Now I can see right now. Already, I can tell what the devil going to accuse on. Daddy, he going to accuse because the man's short. Some kind of way, TDJ's going to make it seem like that man being short is something wrong with it. And that's what I feel like this sermon is going to be about because he paused there. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree. Remember you used to live on Sycamore Street, Adam? In Clute, in, I mean in uh, Lake Jackson. And then you lived on Acacia. <laughs> and then you lived on Live Oak. You know what I'm saying? The sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Oh, do you believe Jesus is coming your way? This, this next part of an A clause of a sentence possessed me. When Jesus reached the spot, That, that, that's it right there. When Jesus reached the spot. Zacchaeus had already gotten there, but when Jesus reached the spot, 
he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. <laughs> but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him today, salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Can you say amen? amen. Take me back up to uh, the third verse, please. Uh, no, five, verse five. When Jesus reached the spot, my subject this morning is simply hit the spot. Whatever you got to do, whatever you got to crawl through, whatever you got to cry through, whatever you got to pray through, whatever you got to endure, whoever's got to hate on you, whoever despises you, whoever turns against you, none of that is going to matter as long as you hit the spot. You will not spend the rest of your life nor legacy talking about the obstacles that got in between you and the spot. If you hit the spot, you will forget the struggle that preceded the spot. Somebody in here has been commissioned by the Holy Spirit. Somebody watching online has been commissioned by the Holy Spirit to hit the spot. Somebody shout, hit the spot. On your way down to your seat, tell your neighbor, I gotta hit the spot. Holy Spirit, speak in this place today. Ratify yourself, establish yourself, extend yourself, magnify yourself, electrify, illuminate, declare yourself in such a dynamic way that we are left awed by the presence of your glory. I thank you in advance for what you're about to do. I believe you, O oh God, to have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Dr. Maya Angelou is known to have quoted this statement, which has become a, a household uh, reflection of some of the many granular wisdom thoughts that she left as grains of sand in time that extend beyond death. She says, when a person tells you who they are, believe them. And this grain of wisdom is quite profound and quite prolific. It is quite impactful. It helps us to understand the sociological impact. I told you I was God, you don't believe me. The psychology behind people to understand that when a person tells you who they are, to believe them, uh, not to argue with them, not to be, have such a Messiah complex that you are trying to turn water into wine. Leave that for Jesus. It is what it is. You will notice the enemy tempted Jesus to turn the rock to bread, but if it's a rock, it's a rock. And some of us are bent on turning people into what we want them to be rather than to accept them as they are. So Dr. Angelou concluded when people tell us who they are, believe them. The reality, however, however is most people don't know who they are. So it is not that you meet people so often who have a definitive that describes accurately and profoundly who a person is, but rather, in fact, you have most people who have a question, not an exclamation point over their head because they are uncertain about who they are. They're not foolish or ignorant, simply evolving, simply transforming, simply vessels of clay spinning on a wheel, touched by a master who it does not yet appear what they shall be. And so when we ask them who they are, it becomes difficult for them to define who they are because they are yet becoming. 
The process of yet becoming is very important. The process is in more important than the product. Because if the process is not comprehensive, the product will be fragile and broken. We race to the finished product, but we don't have a great appreciation for the process. I personally believe one of the reasons that it became difficult for Adam to withstand the temptation that Eve offered to him is that Adam was created grown. And any time you are thrust into something without process, you lack the ability to be able to manage what has been given to you because it is in fact the process itself that helps to teach you how to manage what has been given to you, thrust upon you. He was born a man. Being born a baby and evolving to a toddler and becoming a young person and ultimately going through adolescence is a part of your development that helps you to self-discover who you are. But to be shaped out of clay and blown a breath of life into and wake up a man and wake up a husband and wake up a father is a lot to thrust on somebody who was a lump of clay a moment ago. And yet there are some people in this room that will be thrust into areas that do not reflect your background. And it will be difficult to withstand the very thing you ask God to do because you ask God for the product, not the process. And many times God will oblige you and allow you to have the product without the process and you don't realize that it is in fact the process that prepares you to withstand the weight, the pain, and the agony of the product itself. I submit for your consideration that 80% of people who hit the lottery go broke in two years. They go broke in two years because they are thrust into a lifestyle for which their life has not been built up to. They don't have the right attorneys. They don't have the right PR people. They don't have the right accountants. They don't have the right relationships, the accruements that accessorize the level of grandeur to which they have been lifted. So there they are with a Bill Gates wallet and a Joe Pools Hall mentality. It is better to enter into a thing gradually so the first man, Adam, was born a man. The second man, Adam, was born of a virgin. And look at how much better he did with temptation because he went through process. He was born of a virgin. He lived in a manger. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. He, he confounded the doctors and lawyers at 12 years old. He drops out of sight for 18 years because real greatness must be incubated in isolation. I said real greatness must be incubated in isolation. You don't, want to, you don't want the spotlight to hit you while you are yet evolving because the critics will kill you before you become who God wants you to be. So sometimes God will hide your 18 years of confusion about who I am until you come to some conclusion about who you are and then bring you back into the spotlight Tina Turner was better on her second round than she was her first round because she had time to incubate for a moment in obscurity. To sort through the linen of her marriage and her life and her trials and her failures requires privacy for reflection. What I exalt before you is not the promise but the wilderness. It is not the mandrakes, it is not the milk and honey that I came to preach to you about. It is the significance of the wilderness, the isolation, the frustration, the murmuring, the complaining, the times that you feel like throwing up your hands and walking away. Those are the times that prepare you for the promised land. And if you don't have that preparation, you won't be able to fight off the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Gerashites, and all the things that go along with what you have been placed into 
NDRA, NDRA says it like this, slow down baby, you're moving too fast. You got your hands on the wheel and the foot on the gas. You're about to wreck your future running from your past. Slow down, baby, you're moving too fast. Now, slow down messages are not easy to preach because people like right now messages, immediately, straightway, suddenly message. But the reality is in order to have something that lasts a lifetime, you have to slow down. Sudden decisions are not good decisions. Sudden decisions are often built off of emotionalism. And then when the emotion changes, the decision is made and all you're left with regret and pain and agony. I bring all of this before you today because finding out who you are takes time. It takes a long time because somebody asks you who you are at 15 is a completely different answer from who you are at 25. And then somebody comes along and asks you at 42 who you are and you want to cancel everything you said about 25 because you are yet becoming. It takes you a long time to really be able to answer that question and at the risk of disagreeing with Dr. Angelou, please don't tell me too fast who you are because I might believe it. And then my belief would imprison you to who you were. It's okay to say, I don't know yet. I'm becoming, I'm developing. I'm not sure of who I am. It's, it's, it's okay to say I'm still on a journey. That's when you don't know. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. You're right about that. Because in 2000, what was it, 2009, when that happened to me, you know what I'm saying, and God spoke to me and screamed out with a shout, you know what I'm saying, saying he ain't never been up here with us, you know what I'm saying. And when God, uh, this Adam talking and this God talking, so we don't know what we gonna call ourselves, cause uh, I wanna call ourselves Adam, cause that's what everybody know me by. Um, but then you know, shoes. I wanna call everybody God. You know what I'm saying? I wanna call myself God and call everybody else God. You know what I'm saying? Cause God lives in us. Shit, we the glory that everybody see on the outside, but we know God is the invisible God that lives in us Adam and God and Jesus you know what I'm saying and and we the ones that you see the glory of God shines on your face you know what I'm saying everybody man that's why we was wearing masks we wasn't wearing masks because of no disease and you know they made it seem like it was a mask because of disease but the mask was put on so that we wouldn't have no violence you know what I'm saying? Because it was movies, it's movies being made. You know what I'm saying? All, every day movies are being made by God. You know what I'm saying? The life that you live is a movie. And you're doing the parts. Just like the movies you see. Some of them ain't got no cameras going around. Oh, we gonna do this and you say this and this can be said and then recorrect it. No, some of this stuff is shot the way we live our life. And the way you live your life, that's the way uh, God shoot real life movies. Lifetime is real. You don't have a chance to go back and redo it because that's your life. That's your real wife. That's your real husband. That's your real kids. You know what I'm saying? That's your real life God showing. Ain't no cameras all over, all over the place going now, You know, when you get the cameras and, you know, all that stuff, that's a plus. That's what T.D. Jakes and them do. But then, you know, movie stars, they got their own thing. You know what I'm saying? But like Adam right now and me, you know, and the where I go, what I do, people know me. I'm the movie that's being played. It come on whatever time the world play it. And all the little stuff I do, you know, I don't get paid for the videos and stuff I do. I don't get paid for it. 
I'm non-profit, you know what I'm saying? Plus, you know what I'm saying? I do take tithing, or not tithe, but I do take offerings, you know what I'm saying? Charity, you know what I'm saying? Because I am broke, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, because, you know, everybody ain't, you know, received my inheritance yet. I'll know when I get mine. You know what I'm saying? This the baby that's going to be born in 80, 88. January 1st, you know what I'm saying, 80, 88, no, 80, 66, daddy, 80, 88, that's Jeremy, he gonna be reborn then, you gonna be reborn 80, 66, this mama dear, I'm coming back 23, Pet coming back 24, and Jeremy coming back, I mean, and Champ coming back 91, and so on. You know what I'm saying? And we'll redo this thing over again. But Uncle Peck and Mama D, you and everybody else ain't going to go past 21. You ain't going to die no more. You're going to have the perfect body the next one. Ruin them might not pass 21 this time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Mama D and them might be back at 21 and surprise us and ruin them. When Rowan 21, it's something special supposed to happen when Rowan 21. And how many years it is now? Because it was always a seven. But uh, let me see, 15. It was 15 at one time. Now he's seven now. So seven to 21, that's 14 years. 14 years, I got to stay. Edmund, 20 years older than me. I'm 22 years older than Jeremy. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to give you language that describes confusion, incompleteness, isolation, and wandering. You can just say, I'm still on a journey. I'm still becoming. I'm still evolving. I'm on the road to greatness. You know, I remember uh, my stepdaddy, Jerry, he asked me one day, I was taking him to the store to get some beer. And he asked me, he said, Troy, who are you? And I looked over at him and I said, Jerry, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't say I was God, and I couldn't say I was Adam. I just said, I don't know. Because I was out there talking as God all the time, and Jerry was hearing me. But then, you know, everybody was hearing me, and they knew I was in the spirit talking. And they just couldn't all walk up to me and say, hey, man, that's a good job, man. You deserve it, man. All that. I had one dude told me I deserve it when I screamed out and shouted that, you know, he ain't never been up here with us and we was in heaven when I brought y'all up in 2009. We ain't went back down since. We ain't went back down. We ain't going down. We up. You know what I'm saying? You up now. You won so far. All you got to do is repent if you is a bad person. If you're a bad person, you could be a good person tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? If you want to, you know what I'm saying? I'm on the road to wisdom. I'm on the road to victory. I'm on the road to mastery. I'm not a maestro yet, but I'm on the road to becoming. I'm not professorial yet, but I'm on the road to becoming, and I'm satisfied to be on the road. Anybody okay with not being finished? Because if you are not okay with not being finished, you will torment yourself trying to be what you are not to live up to an image that is, and if you are not satisfied with being on the road, you will build camouflage to cover your imperfections so that you will appear to be further along than you are. If you are not willing to be on the road, you will spend too much money on bling to look like the room you're in and not have the experience and the language to communicate in the room you're in. Just because you can buy a Brioni suit doesn't make you have a PhD. You, you have to learn how to give yourself time 
to evolve. I take the time to set it up this way. No, TDJ, <clears throat> I ain't got that kind of time <clears throat> to learn how to be rich, TDJ. <clears throat> that ain't what I meant when I said the last, the first gonna be last and the last gonna be first, TDJ. That what I, that ain't what I meant. I meant your rich ass was gonna still be rich. But the last was going to be first to be rich. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might be rich with a few million, 18, 20, 30, 40, 50. I don't know how many million you worth. But then everybody coming in the world going to have $666 zillion. And I'm going to continue pouring $22 zillion worth of air per week that's how much I, ch I charge God for the air this ain't no devil this the professor that help God do what he doing this God you know what I'm saying remember me Adam when I talked to you and you know I was God and you God too but we stopped being the professor now when we gonna stop being Adam and just simply be God you know what I'm saying will the world accept us God as God, yeah, they gonna accept us. <laughs> Shit, they gonna have to. And we daddy, man. We won now. Because what is there are many things that are distinctive to me about this text. I think we have done Zacchaeus a disservice. Uh, because Zacchaeus' sermon should at least be preached as much as the woman with the issue of blood. He is in the same straits. He is rejected by his people. He is ostracized by his own. He is alienated and regulated to a group of people that has, has earned the ire of his peers. And yet he would see Jesus. With MailChimp, you can design more engaging marketing assets in no time at all. Thanks to our AI-powered creative assistant. He's in the same situation because Jesus does not come to see him. He goes to see Jesus. He's in the same situation because he has to press his way through the crowd in the hopes of getting in the path of Jesus that he might receive something meaningful that is life-changing and we hardly ever talk about Zacchaeus at all. And I want to bring it to light this morning and talk to you just a moment or two about Zacchaeus because everything important that happened to Zacchaeus happened on the road. Now let us put the text in context. Jesus is himself on a journey. He is on a death march to a cross. He's on a death march to an execution. He is on a death march to have everything that he has taught put on trial by the nails in his hands and in his feet and the piercing of his side. <coughs> and now we have to prove what we've been preaching all of this time and he's marching to, toward it, perhaps with some anxiety, with some trepidation, with some, uh, re, re, some resentment. Perhaps there is some a turmoil, get that from me. Perhaps there is some turmoil going on in his life because Jesus has to grapple with the fact that the only way he can validate who he is is to become more vulnerable. And anytime you have to become more vulnerable to be successful, it becomes more difficult because we are much better at camouflaging vulnerability than allowing our vulnerability to become the canvas of which greatness is shown on. Because you have to be strong to be weak. See, little people can't let themselves be weak. You have to be strong enough to lay your armor down and know that if I lay it down, I can take it back up again. You have to be confident enough in who you are in order to be nice to people that have been nasty because you know you didn't lose anything by being nice to them. Little people can't be nice to nasty people. They have to get even because they are so little that they don't want you to see their littleness. So they dress up in their daddy's shoes and their daddy's clothes and they walk around like they're important. 
but just because you got your daddy's shoes on doesn't make you anything but a five-year-old with a 10 foot, with a 10 size 10 shoe on. It doesn't even fit your foot, but you're wearing it because you want to camouflage your vulnerability. Jesus is on the road unlike any other road that we will ever see him on. It kind of reminds me of David being on the road uh, back to build, uh, to establish his kingdom after he has taken Judah. Now after Israel, he is on the road. The trouble happens on the road. Uzzah reaches out and touches the Ark of the Covenant and he dies and the trouble happens on the road. And, and, and David is delayed for three months uh, out of frustration because the trouble happens on the road. You don't have to remember the Bible. Bible story, just remember that the trouble happens on the road. Every, every trouble happens on the road. The woman with the issue of blood was trouble happening on the road. Blind Bartimaeus was trouble happening on the road. The trouble happens on the road. Once you get to a steady place, a safe place, you get to a place of resoluteness and confidence. But while you are in transition, all hell breaks loose. All kind of turmoil breaks loose. All kind of inner pain and insecurity breaks through. And all of a sudden you have to grapple with who you present yourself to be while you are wrestling with who you are. Now I know you can't afford to say amen to this because you cannot afford to let anybody know that there is any contradiction between what you have presented and what you represent when the lights are out and the crowd is gone and the people have gone away. I know you can't let anybody know on your job all the different voices that are talking on your shoulder while you go into work. I know when you walk in the office, you're gonna walk in with total confidence and nobody will ever realize that you were scared to death of the promotion that God gave you. And I also know that you will secretly resent them for not comforting what you couldn't even show them. I know your marriages will implode because your real self starved to death while your companion fed your fake self. I know that loneliness exists no matter how many people are around because it doesn't matter how many people are around you as long as they're around you and they don't know who you really are. We are only comforted. Damn, TJ, this God, man. Man, you was that devil in the, in the, in the beginning, man, because everything you saying is just like the devil was saying it back then to me and Eve. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly the way you was explaining it. You know what I'm saying? Explaining it just like that. You know what I'm saying? Judging and accusing. You know what I'm saying? Saying that we didn't want nobody to know what we look like. You know what I'm saying? God didn't want you to know what you look like. You know what I'm saying? And made Eve think it was something to see. You know what I'm saying? And it was. We was naked, and you right now explaining how, and 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 exposing the nakedness of people that's in their privacy, which ain't none of your business, T.D. Jakes. That's the devil's business, not yours. You know what I'm saying? But it is yours because you the devil, I guess. You know what I'm saying? But that's the devil's business, not God's. You know what I'm saying? Why are you even preaching, man, and stealing my money? You know what I'm saying? Married preacher. And it's been a resurrection. After the resurrection, wasn't supposed to be no marrying and giving in the marriage. You wasn't even supposed to think, teach on dying no more. You were supposed to teach what I said. You wasn't supposed to die anymore because you was all as angels. And you wasn't supposed to get married or be given in the marriage. So you can sit your ass down, TDJ. You and Creflo Dollar and Bill Winston and uh Tony Evans and them, you know what I'm saying? Cause uh you air it in the scriptures, you know, brother. When we are transparent, 
when we find the kinds of relationships with which we can be authentic and we can be real and we can be who we are. And it, it needed to be okay. Now, I don't know if you can handle this, but it needed to be okay for Jesus to be worried. He couldn't show Matthew and Bartholomew or, or, or Judas or any of the rest of them, but he needed to be able to go in the Garden of Gethsemane and wrestle with himself a little bit and say, you know what, I love you, Daddy, but I don't know about this cross thing. I don't know whether I want to do this. Now, if it be thy will, pass this bitter cup away from me. You can't take everybody into transparency. Only a few people can handle who you really are and respect your ability to produce real miracles. But Jesus had the benefit of growing up. Grown in the spirit, yep. yeah. but growing in his humanity. Yes. Wow. Fully God in the spirit, but growing like a child in a manger, nursing at his mother's breast, playing games. What about Adam, TDJs? The Adam you got now, 56-year-old Adam. What about him, TDJs? Is he fully God? You know what I'm saying? This God talking, you know what I'm saying? This Adam talking, but am I fully God, TDJ? Why is your story is not about me in my 2009 experience and all the teaching that you heard me saying when I wasn't supposed to be heard? You know what I'm saying? When I was just talking in the air, you know what I'm saying? And it was hard for him to be understood because they kept saying, is not this the carpenter's son? The hardest place to flourish is in the place where you grew up. Oh, you ain't gotta say nothing. The people you grew up with know too much. They remember too much. They've seen too much. And they start saying things like, I knew you when. I knew you where. I knew you how. And, and they can't know you now because they're still stuck on when. Yeah, that's right. So Jesus is on the road to fight with the angel of death to rip the sting out of its paw, the victory away from the grave. This is not a time that he needs distraction because he is headed toward the cross. Everybody in here has had their crosses. It's hard to be pleasant and polite when you're headed for a cross. It's hard to be congenial and mannerable when you're headed for a cross. It's hard to be compassionate and giving when you're headed for a cross because it is natural to do reflection of, of can I handle, not the crown, but can I handle the cross that creates the crown? Now, that's the problem right there, TDJ. Why are you still teaching on the fight, on fighting for a crown? You know what I'm saying? When Jesus already fought the good fight and died for you, TDJ, and you don't have to die no more unless you don't accept Adam and God and Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you don't die no more. So why are you teaching that you got to go on a cross like Jesus did then when it shouldn't be no cross now? The only cross that we should have now is maybe, you know, some poor people and stuff like that. But we shouldn't be talking about dying on the cross. Jesus dying on the cross or Jesus coming back or none of that stuff. Because he already done that. You know what I'm saying? And he's supposed to be within you. That's what you were supposed to be eating when you was taking all that communion. But just like you take communion and not be godly thinking. And you wasn't thinking about God. You know. When you say, in the name of Jesus, or in Jesus' name, 
God is not on your, Jesus and God is not nowhere near you in your mind when we was right there sitting in your heart all the time. You know what I'm saying? But you put us out. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, T.D. Jakes, man, you know what I'm saying? And that there, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Is what I'm talking about. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus, the Bible takes the rare occasion. Why are we talking about a cross? when Jesus was the resurrection and he already passed the cross. He already died for us. Nobody's supposed to die ever again in our life. Now, when you see people go to sleep and pass away, stop breathing, stop heart beating, then the spirit of God is still in the family members. In me especially, but all family members of that individual and everybody in the world, all angels in the world, forefathers that had died and all that. When Jesus did what he did, the resurrection of Jesus, he was the first fruit. And then Adam came back and everybody that Adam had came back all the way up to 8,088 when Jeremy going to be born again. And I'm going to name him. Adam Latroy Jackson. <laughs> Shit. But you know, um, all the people that's in the, the world, you know what I'm saying? If, say for instance, you get a divorce from somebody and they get with somebody, they get married or they get with somebody and marry them, they married anyway if they get with somebody else because God consider marriage somebody just being together and having sex. That's marriage. So, so uh, if if you get a divorce from somebody and marry somebody else, yeah, in the Bible it say it's wrong, and it is, cause you're not supposed to be married no way, and you considered dead when before Christ you considered dead anyway. So you and your husband that you was married to, if you didn't have Christ in your life at that time, you was dead to sin anyway. You 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 was a sinner, but you didn't have Christ, so it really didn't matter, you know what I'm saying? So God didn't count it against you, because you wasn't playing with the Lord, you know what I'm saying? So, after you receive Christ and stuff like that, and then been divorced and stuff like that, then it's a different story. You receive Christ, you receive the death, burial, and resurrection. You don't marry, nor are you given in the mar marriage, nor can you die anymore. Because you all as angels. And so as angels, you can't die. So that's why, you know, when I fell asleep, they didn't know who I was. But when I said who I was, then it all went to where people started acting like they did back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Start acting crazy. Judging and accusing and doing things they wasn't supposed to do when I said who I was. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a test to see if I'm really who I am. You know, if I'm gonna be merciful, graceful, if I'm gonna teach instead in love instead of uh, convict and put in jail, you know what I'm saying? No, I ain't about all that. You know what I'm saying? I let God the air handle all that. I'm the air that's you know sitting in front of you. I'm sir. I'm you know sire. You know what I'm saying? I'm sire, not desire. Desire is taken away. From the sire. Desire. Take away from sire. That's devaluing God. Adam. And Eve. And all the rest of the kingdom of God. You know what I'm saying. To tell us. That he is short. Why? Does the Bible who seldom describes the height of its characters take the time to point out to us that he was short? It doesn't say that about me. To set up the devil, 
to see if the devil was going to judge and accuse him, to see what kind of sermon you going to preach. You know what I'm saying? That's why I made him short and put it in the Bible that he was too short. So he had to get up in a tree. It's just a simple sentence. He was too short, you know what I'm saying? So he had to go up in a tree. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But if a devil preaching it to you and he's an accuser of the brethren, this is what you're going to get. Many other characters. Only one I can think of off the top of my head is that Saul was tall. He was a head and shoulders above other men. But as a rule, the Bible doesn't tell us about the physical characteristics of the character, especially this one off mention of Zacchaeus. Why was it important Why? that he was short? Why? And I assume that if you are a short man, you were a short child. And having been a child myself, it is a disadvantage to grow up around other kids when you are shorter than them. You are more apt to be bullied, more apt to be picked on, more apt to be ostracized, more apt to be criticized, more apt to go home crying to your mama, more apt to go home with scars. See, judging and accusing. <laughs> you can't go without it, daddy. That's what you left them with. When you separated me from them, I was still, I was still on earth, but they were still in earth. Like John Vaslavik and Ernest Ramirez, when they said, God, you know what I'm saying? Out of all the places, you know, you had to come, you had to come to the earth, you know what I'm saying? And he called me God, you know what I'm saying, when he told me that. And then the other one saying, you God, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Telling me I was God and all that there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But like I say, man, you know, uh, uh, judging and accusing T.D. Jakes ain't cool, man. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, I knew you was going to judge and accuse him being short. You know, that's all it come down to with you, man. It's every sermon you preach, you got to judge the characters in the Bible. Instead of them being righteous, you always, none is righteous, not even one. We is filthy rags to you, and we all got God in us. And the glory of God shine through us, and we got Walmart that was built by the hands of God in the people that didn't know that they was the hands of God. Now they know they are the hands of God. They name is Adam Latroy Jackson. And like this Walmart, it ain't like the one in Lake Jackson. When I first came in 2009, they had on Walmart and, and at the mall in Lufkin, they had, you know, on the door, uh, Adam's, uh, uh, damn, Star Adam, Star Adam, and it was like Adam was in a movie, and it was my star that I was on, so I wasn't really around my enemies and stuff, they was on a different planet, Earth, and I was on a different planet, Earth. like right now, I'm on a different planet, Earth, than the people that I used to know, you know what I'm saying, I'm on a different planet, Earth, you know what I'm saying, I created a new, new heavens, and the heavens that I created are you. And God was in the heavens, mean I was in all y'all when I made everything. You know what I'm saying? I was in everybody that was in heaven. God was in the heavens. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. And I was in all y'all. And I said, let us make man in our image. I was in the heavens and let us make man in the heavens image, in love's image, in God's image, in God's imagination. You know what I'm saying? And bruises because you are short. So we must then understand that what we call the Napoleon spirit is a derivative 
of the anger that mounts into the victim after they have become weary of being short. They attack with severity. They assume you don't like them. If you come up on me, I'm not going to have you. You don't know who you feel. I know that don't let this do this. Zacchaeus is short. So we know about his height and we know about his job. He is neither Hebrew enough or Jewish enough to be embraced by his brethren because both culturally and spiritually he is an outcast. Bear with me, I'm going somewhere. He is an outcast because he is a tax collector. Now at first you would compare that to working with the IRS, but you have to realize that he is not collecting for the Jewish nation. He is collecting for the Roman Empire. So he is a flunky, let me break it down into an African-American colloquialism, he's an Uncle Tom. He's, he's a big old Uncle Tom who has gotten rich from ripping off and exploiting and exposing his people. So he has no hiding place amongst his people. And he is rejected from the Romans because no matter how good you try to act, you still not one of us. And he was short. Gotta accuse him, gotta let him know, and he was short, just like, and he naked. His that nakedness is, and he was short. Watch out for people that nobody likes. Watch out for people that have been locked out of the clique and locked out of the group and locked out of the club. Watch out for people that are misfit, misplaced people. I know that he talking about me now, uh, Daddy. He talking about me, Adam now, Daddy. He gonna lie. Well, he don't consider me God, so he think you know I'm just me. So uh, that's me that he talking about right there, Daddy, right there. They got some problems, but when they get their problems worked out, God is going to do amazing things in their life. Are there any people in the room? I want to talk to some people in the room that have never been able to fit nowhere at no time with nobody. No matter what you did, no matter what you wore, no matter how you changed yourself, you still didn't fit. And you had to learn how to be cool with being a misfit. A short tax collector. He cannot reap the benefits of the camaraderie that comes along with being the oppressed. Nor can he have the fraternity of being the oppressor. In other words, he can't go to the country club and he's not accepted at the barbershop. And he was short. Oh, any short people in the room? Vertically challenged people. The truth of the matter is everybody should have put their head up. Because the Bible said, I all have sinned and come. Yeah, all have sinned, all have sinned. Rich folks, poor folks, well-dressed folk, white folks, black folk, brown folk, Canadian folk, American folk, Nigerian folk, Bohemian folk, all have sinned and come short, and he was short. I want to talk to some people who can admit I come up short.
I come up short as a Christian. I come up short as a preacher. I come up short as a mother. I come up short as a father. I come up short in my life. I come up short as a professional and I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Cause if but then you come up short, T.D. Jakes. And then when you see somebody better than you or know more than you, you come up short. And then you try to bring them down to your level by taking and lessening their anointing by sabotaging them like you did Adam, T.D. Jakes. Come on now. You sit up there and preach like you godly, but you ungodly. You a devil. Come on, man. Every day I got to deal with the fact that I am. I had to fight harder because I was short. I had to fight longer because I was short. I had to do what I had to do to compensate. to compensate for the nagging, knowing reality that I am short. I'm married, but I'm short. <laughs> the world is at a tipping point as historical events of biblical proportions are unfolding before our eyes. Quite possibly, the most consequential prophecy yet to be fulfilled in our day is of a spiritual awakening in Israel foretold by the prophet Ezekiel thousands of years ago. Man, God in, God in Louisville, Texas, homeboy. God is not in Israel. Israel is in Adam. <laughs> and Adam is in Louisville, Texas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna mess with you a little bit. I'm a mother, but I'm short. And I deal with the guilt of being short. And I have a dream, and I have a goal, and I have a vision, but I'm short. And the worst part about being short is, I thought maybe if I wear these heels, or, or maybe, maybe if I stood up on a step ladder, or, 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 or maybe if I climb up on a rooftop, or maybe if I climb up a tree, maybe you won't notice that I'm short because we spend our lives trying to hide our vulnerabilities. So he was short. So he was rich. There is a correlation between short and rich. If I don't excel at this, at least I excel at that. <laughs> or y'all ain't gonna help me. See, I'm trying to tell you that so oftentimes what drives you to be the most successful is the terror of being short. I'm trying to tell you what makes us need to compensate for our inadequacies is the awareness that if you saw who I really was, you wouldn't like me. And so I bought all of this stuff so you wouldn't see. That I'm short. Now I have to live with the contradiction of I'm powerful, but I'm short. I'm connected, but I'm short. I'm wealthy, but I'm short. And I can't make either truth go away. I can't stop being rich and powerful, and I can't stop being short. Can I talk to some people this morning? that are living with contradictions that you can't talk to anybody about because deep down on the inside, they talk about how great you are, but you go home with how short. Come on, where are my short people? Make some noise. Where are my short people? Where are my short people? Where are my short people? 
Where my short people? Make some noise. I want to talk to some short people. You might be seven foot two, but you're still short. You might be six foot eight, but you're still short. You may have more degrees than a thermometer, but you're still short. In fact, that may be why you got the degree. Because if I get enough degrees, maybe you won't see. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Let me quit. Maybe you won't see. Where are my real people at? I want some real people. I need about 3,000 real people that will take 30 seconds and praise him in spite of your shortness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can come out of the choir. They can come out of the musicians. They can come out the back. They can come out of security. But I need about 3,000 people who knew the odds were against them. And in spite of your shortness, God bless you to make it anyway. Make some noise in this place. She said, you good, man. But the only thing I don't like about you is everything is judging and accusing the apostles, the disciples, everybody that you, every soul must be judged and accused from you. And that puts you in a category as a devil, TDJ, as a devil. You know what I'm saying? Not a God, not representing God. I, I say in your mind, you say you represent God, but when it comes down to it, you don't, because Adam God. And you know Adam God. You ignoring God. And and that's the problem, DDJ. Adam sitting here homeless in a truck. He happy though. He the happiest he ever been. And gonna be. You know what I'm saying? Even if he get out, he ain't gonna be happy as he is now, because he's gonna be happier then. Cause every day, TDJ. I get more knowledge, more wisdom. Until I'm the stars, I'm the moon, I'm the sun. And I'm watching over you, TDJ. From your eyes. In the inside of your heart. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to get off this thing now, y'all. I love y'all, man. And God love you. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.